Now, uh, here I'll explain you uh, what is the diameter of of a conic section, uh, whether it is parabola or whether it is circle or ellipse or hyperbola. The definition of the diameter is same. Now let's take an example of ellipse to explain you the diameter. Suppose this is a standard ellipse, right? And and this is the the chord of the ellipse. Let's take a let's take any chord, one chord of the ellipse like this. Now you can see if I find the locus of the midpoint of this chord. Suppose it's a variable chord. It's a variable chord, variable chord which is moving in such a way that it can move only parallel to itself. Or we can say this is series of parallel chords. Right, series of parallel chords. Now if I join the midpoints of all these chords like this now this is the diameter or we can say diameter is the locus of you can see we are just joining all the midpoints so it is locus of midpoints trajectory of trajectory formed by joining midpoints midpoints of parallel chords chords drawn parallel to uh, of parallel chords chords of the same slope or we can say a series of parallel chords if you join their midpoints you get a diameter of, of an ellipse right so we can say diameter is a, a locus of midpoints of series of parallel chords right now if we derive equation of locus we'll see it's a line passing through center of the ellipse how can we derive equation of uh, uh, diameter? It's very easy. We can just take a suppose this is an ellipse, and there is a variable chord representing series of parallel chords. So basically, slope is fixed. Slope equal to m. Right? It's a variable chord which will move in such a way that it is always parallel to itself so basically it's a series of parallel chords and, and we'll try to find locus of midpoint of this variable chord so we assume midpoint as x1 y1 right now you know if there is a chord and we know the midpoint of that chord we can apply this formula to find equation of the equation of the chord equation of or you can say equation of chord whose midpoint is known whose midpoint is x1 y1 where t is equation of tangent passing through x1 y1 is just a result for an ellipse it is x x1 uh, by a square plus y y1 by b square equals to x1 square by a square right this is applying when you apply this result there will be minus 1 minus 1 both the sides which we cancel out equation of chord whose midpoint is x1 y1 now it's moving in such a way that slope is fixed slope is constant and we can find slope of this you know slope of a line is minus coefficient of x divided by coefficient of y so minus x1 by a square over minus sorry minus x1 by a square over y1 by b square equal to m where m is constant so you can see locus is y1 equals to minus b square by a square x1 by m right so this is the equation of the diameter or we can say y equal to uh, some kx is the equation of the diameter of the ellipse it's a line which passes through center of the ellipse so if you have to see where are the diameters of the ellipse all these all these lines are diameters all lines every chord that passes through center is the diameter of the ellipse right now quickly let's see the diameter of a parabola diameter of a circle you know it's a line passing through center of the circle and and you have been s uh, playing with this since so many years the diameter of a circle now parabola is interesting thing if you have not seen it before if you have no, no idea about that it's interesting to see so we take a variable chord of the parabola of slope m a b is a variable chord which is moving in such a way that its slope always remain constant so we can draw parallel chords like this a b can move like this a b is moving like this parallel to itself now we are supposed to find locus or midpoint of this let it be x1 y1 now equation of a b is t equal to s1 
y y1 minus 2a x plus x1 equals to y1 square minus 4a x1 equation of fault whose midpoint is x1 y1 now slope equals to constant slope is 2a by y1 equals to constant m now you can see locus is y equals to 2a by m or we can say y equals to k so you can see the form of the diameter in case of parabola it is not the line it is not the chord that passes through vertex right or or or, or any other important point of the parabola it's it's a diameter of so the parabolas or uh, sorry diameter of a parabola are, are these these are diameters the lines which are parallel to x axis y equal to k these are all diameters so you can see it's very different from ellipse and circle right and and as well as hyperbola also now uh, basically we have to see conjugate diameters let's see the definition of conjugate diameters two diameters are said to be conjugate so let's let's come back to ellipse now we have ellipse like this now suppose this is diameter ab i take another diameter cd now these diameters are said to be conjugate to each other ab and cd are conjugate to each other if if i draw if i if i draw chords parallel to say cd series of chords parallel to cd and find the locus of their midpoint right find the locus of the midpoint and that will be ab so locus of midpoints of chords parallel to cd is ab and vice versa so ab and cd satisfy this condition that's why they are conjugate diameters so the definition of conjugate diameter we can say a pair is conjugate diameter right these are this pair of diameters they are conjugate like ab and cd in this in this diagram right are conjugate if series of chords drawn parallel to first pair if if locus of midpoint of series of chords drawn parallel to first is a second chord or we can say series of chords locus of midpoints of series of chords drawn parallel to second is the first diameter locus is the is the first chord so this diameter is conjugate to this because if this one is conjugate to the uh, uh, this because if i draw chords parallel to this and join their midpoints if i join their midpoints i'll get this cd right so this is how we define pair of conjugate diameters so i'll repeat this conjugate pair of conjugate diameter means you take first diameter draw series of chords parallel to it and join their midpoints you should get the second chord and you should get the second diameter so pair of conjugate diameters you take the second diameter draw chords parallel to the second diameter join their midpoints you should get the first diameter so how that's how they they, they related they related to each other pair of conjugate diameters right now in relationship is suppose slope of first diameter is m1 and that of second is m2 then relationship between them is m1 m2 equals to uh, a square by uh, m1 m2 equals to the uh, minus b square by a square so pair of slopes of uh, uh, slopes of uh, uh, pair of conjugate diameters the product of the slopes of the pair of conjugate diameters equals to minus b square by a square and another thing which we need to learn here is so you can see derivation yourself uh, it's not important so if these are uh, uh, conjugate diameters and if a centric angle of this point is theta then a centric angle of this point is say it's a theta 1 and that of theta 2 then theta 2 is theta 1 plus pi by 2 again it's a result which you can derive yourself or or you can leave out the derivation is not important so that's the relationship they share the end points of the pair of conjugate diameters if this is if a centric angle of this point is theta 1 or just says theta see then this is theta plus pi by 2 this is again theta plus pi by 2 so it becomes theta plus pi this becomes theta plus 3 pi by 2 or we can say theta minus pi by 2 so this is a relationship they share with each other the end points of the pair of conjugate